So we're looking at more common mistakes that players are making. We're going to be looking at this particular gameplay because it is a flawless gameplay where I do not die. I do get downed at one point, but I'm still able to survive and recover. One of the most important parts when you are getting started is getting a comfortable landing spot typically with your team. You can see that three of us landed essentially together and one person landed on their own. We were playing trio fills, so that fourth player is a random that we're not necessarily familiar with. The, the goal is to get a loadout as fast as possible. If you're not good at doing that, find a spot where you can get better at doing that. For me, it ends up being this side of the roof because you can transfer over to the grandma's house where there's typically a buy station. There is one in this particular gameplay and then there's another one over at control. The thing that you really need to be focusing on is every time you get a kill in the beginning, a lot of times people will try to push you, particularly when you get a kill on their teammate. So you gotta be a little bit more aware because you are gonna be low plates. You're not gonna have all the ammo you need. You're not gonna have meta guns. Uh, what we can see right here is we have an enemy right here. We have one right here with the little up arrow. And then we have one here on the down arrow. So likely this person's in the basement of showers. This person could be inside the prison or they could be on the roof. And it looks like this guy's on the level. So likely this is the one that I have to worry about. And, and that's really what's going to happen. So this one probably a non-threat, probably a non-threat. And then this one's on my level. So likely what they're going to do is they're going to push out through here. And then they're going to pre-aim this lane. So that's really what I'm setting myself up for is positioning for the most likely gunfight. Obviously, there's probably other people on the map that I'm not aware of. But either way, this is the fight that I'm expecting because of the way the positioning is. And this one is the most likely threat. Could be this guy on the roof too. So you can look over and then I'd be kind of screwed. But those are things you got to consider uh, when you are going through and doing this stuff. So you can see right here I'm positioning, waiting for the guy to peek. I, I, I check it really quick. Nobody there. So then I back off. So I've assumed that maybe the guy backed off or maybe I just got caught timing and the guy's not there. So I'm continuing to loot. One of the things that I make a mistake of doing, my crosshair placement is a little bit low. And, and that's just kind of something I got to deal with because it's a bad habit that I've developed over... 15 years of playing COD before I realized, hey, you know what? You probably shouldn't have your crosshair so low. Luckily, I do uh, have pretty good aim, so my shots are able to connect as soon as I get on target rather quickly. So one thing that I've started doing, and you'll notice is uh, as I get to an intersection, I do a little bit of a stagger stop. I've noticed more top players tend to do this, and my KD, my, my I have less deaths because of this, because I position myself and then I stop in the middle of a, an area and, and don't full peek it. You can kind of see I did a quick shoulder and then I get back into it. Obviously, I could get closer to the wall. One player that does this very consistently is Biffle. So if you ever watch Biffle and you, you see how he moves around the map, you'll notice that he does a lot of these shoulder checks, shoulder peeks, and is super disciplined about this, especially in doorways, so that you can go ahead and make sure that you're not giving your full cover away. If you start taking damage, you have yeah. enough time to react and get back into cover, which is particularly important. So I'm just continuing to loot. This is something you generally want to do because you can keep your UAVs flowing. You're going to be in a really good spot. You can see that this guy landed on the roof, and then there's a helicopter up here. So there was a guy that landed like right here. There's a guy down in this little hut that the, my teammate's taking care of. Then we have the, the helicopter, which is likely going to try and kill this guy. So knowing how player behavior is, if these guys are on separate teams, the heli and the, the little dot that jumped here, this guy is going to jump and then run into this building and he's going to come down here. So even though I can't see that where they're at, I got that one ping. That is the, the expected behavior of the player. So what I do is I immediately go to pre-aim. My crosshair is dirt right now. My aim is dirt down to the ground. But this guy has almost no shot because I'm pre-aimed. He's going to be sprinting down and I end up with good timing. So I end up taking him out. Pretty fairly easy kill. You can see that this team is split, which is good if you're trying to go for kills. Bad if you're trying to go for wins. Uh, typically, if people are split, you have a, it's a much harder to wipe out the entire team at once. And if they're more stacked, it's harder to wipe them out necessarily. But when you get the kills, it's easy to wipe out an entire team. Uh, what's good about this is if I go and push over here and get this kill uh, on this guy right here, what will end up happening is likely that the next guy will spawn in by the time I would work over here and try and go for this kill. And then the next guy would spawn in. So you can actually chain kills together and essentially farm the lobby if you're trying to go for more kills. 
or you're trying to go for wins, you can you can do it that way as well. We've had a good amount of UAVs, and based off the UAVs, you got to kind of have a good memory of where most players are. And what we can see is there's probably a good chunk of the players on this side, and then there's a chunk on this side of prison, more towards tents, living quarters, on the other side of headquarters. Um, we couldn't really see control, and then you can see there's one dot here. So based off of that, I feel like this area is mostly clear until maybe you get kills and people land, then you can kind of worry about that part of it. Uh, but let's go ahead and continue. So you can kind of see I'm uh, peeking the area. The minimap is showing me where vast majority of players are. Not a lot of people run. I mean, people definitely run ghost in this uh, mode. But normally this early, not a lot of people are having ghosts because they die. They're respawning without ghosts. Um, mounting is a huge underrated thing. It'll allow you to hit a ton of shots. Right now I'm using the 45 mag Fara with the fast mag. I think that's probably really good for duos, potentially trios, but I think in quads, 60 mag is probably the way to go. So I throw that cluster down. Uh, there's not a buy station here. And you can see there's people up on top of the building. I move over, grab this buy station to get a UAV. And this gives us a little more intel when I need it. I don't want to wait until this other UAV is gone. Um, you can see that there is a guy over here where my teammate is working to the right. This guy is landing in, and then there's another one landing here. And the, based off the number of dots of my teammate, um, you can do quick math and realize that there's at least three teams here, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, which means approximately three teams if it's quads. And then we got my teammate down there. Um, so we're talking about at least three teams. And this is where it gets a little tricky because it can get really easy to wipe people because there could be a bunch of people down, they're interacting, but it also allows you to third party. Third party is probably the easiest way to get kills, especially if you are a quote unquote lower skilled player. These are like by far the easiest kills. People have less plates, they're not focused on you, you get free shots. They usually have to push a position that they're not comfortable with because they have to move away from one threat uh, and unfortunately into your crosshairs. And that's inevitably what happens. So we go ahead and take that guy out. I kind of leave him um, because there's not really anyone close by to res him. He just kind of came out of the ground, uh, my thoughts. So, or I mean, not out of the ground, out of the sky. So and there was a guy on top of here. So I come back through. I'm thinking somebody threw the smoke to try and res him. I thirst the kill. I see the guy up here. I land a couple shots. Uh, and then I kind of back off because I'm out in the open there. I need to get the cover. Uh, and... Based off where I've navigated for, through, I can get shot in the back. But based off the UAVs and the fact that I just came from up here, there's really only one guy that can shoot me, which is this angle and then right here. So those are my two threat areas, and I'm covering the line of sights mostly because right here is very hard to hit from him. And then right here, bio, I have a straight shot where I'm basically looking right here and seeing what's going on. So you can see the UAV, somebody on water tower. I might not have noticed this in the moment, but there's somebody up there with water tower. Hopefully they don't have a gun. So I beam this dude. I thirst. And you get a ping on there, but there's further away. This gets called in. I delete that dude. That is a, a very bad job right here. This dude should 100% not be landing on me. He's not even with this group that I just killed. He has no teammates alive and your job when you're the last alive is to float as long as you can make yourself hard to hit and try to land away from people you don't land on people when you are the last alive so a guy comes through i just instantly delete him and he doesn't have any teammates so that is a team wipe unfortunately the lobbies do die kind of quick on rebirth in general now unless you just get a lucky lobby because a lot of people are touching it's easy to get full wipes instead of farming them or it just takes more skill to farm them if you're gonna have deaths and i decided to focus on this specific gameplay because i'm trying to focus a little bit more on fundamental where i navigate around the map how i'm moving through different areas maintaining cover how i peak lines of sight and it's the tempoing is the right amount of tempo because a lot of times people will say well you know these people that drop I'm playing with people that regularly drop 20 and 30 kills, but they have way more deaths than I do. So several times, like in this match where I go 12 and 0, I don't, I don't die. Um, I'm going to have a significantly higher kill at KD than if they got 20 kills and they died like four times, they're going to have a five KD. So over time, it is a little bit more passive, but if you're not like super quick reaction time, that is the play style you kind of have to adopt to a certain extent. 
At me at 34, there's certain plays I cannot make just based on reaction time alone. So somebody who's 18, 19, they could pull off way more plays just because after about 24 years of age, you start to degrade in your reaction time. Some is, you start better than others. So it's kind of well this thing. This is where I wish I had a 60 round mag. So you can kind of see that this area, we mostly cleared it. So behind me, I should be good. You can see that there's only two other teams. So this makes it even easier. Uh, the lobby has kind of died quick. You can see somebody's landing near a loadout. At least that's where the dot appears. Uh, when we look over here on this side, we can see there. And then there's uh, like four dots in this area. So that is essentially the two teams because we have a full squad. There's three players and four. There might be ghosted players, uh, but I guess we'll find that out as Thank we go through. Bro. So I got some kills there. You can see that I'm just kind of peeking the area, making sure no one is moving around. Because of respawn mechanic, people can be landing behind you, get an off angle. Ends up dying there. And you can see how I'm going to end up taking this angle. I go ahead and double check. I'm trying to not leave myself necessarily open. Um, I'm peeking all the different areas. I see the guys down. I go ahead and thirst them One for my teammate. Then that gives me the, the two pings. So three pings, actually. So we have a ping here. That guy's at that. And then there's two people over in this hut directly in front of me. Um, or whatever, this part of this structure, whatever you want to call it, a harbor. Right on so that's one team. And the other team I don't really think is that close. Team A went down, which is horrible. This ruins my potential to push because when this player gets thirsted or they get bled out, if they don't get this self-revive off, it's going to ping that, hey, this guy is flanking you. That's why it, it kind of sucks sometimes to, to play with people that die often. Uh, which you will experience when you're playing with randoms or people that play a little too aggressive for their skill level. You, you'll end up getting pinged very often and it ruins a lot of potentials of plays. So this guy, now I know, it looks like, I, I thought he was on this level in the moment, but it feels like the guy was lower now that I'm looking at well, back uh, really playing. So I open the door, trying to not really give away my footsteps there. And then I decide to take a, a, a different angle. I come through, I'm peeking. And I'm like, where the heck is this guy? And you can see that he's over here on the mini map further down. So he's not actually in this area. I'm just kind of chasing him down. And he's like, where is he? I heard footsteps come around, beam him. And then you can see his teammate is spawning in. And I make this jump, not knowing people have already rotated. These guys already rotated. They likely already have their loadouts, and they probably have Ghost. Um, because you can see where he's beaming me from. Watch, it'll pop up on the mini-map right now. I think we get a UAV. He started probably standing still, or maybe we just got the UAV. But these guys started to rotate over. So, I guess I could have checked that area, but I made the assumption that... It was clear, and I was able to get over the hill. Luckily, I wasn't able to get thirsted because I think my teammates shot at this dude. Kind of like, oh, I can't get my thirst. The guy didn't have a streak, so I'm able to recover from that. I immediately stim as soon as I get up. I checked the area because I wasn't sure if this guy was pushing. If he's sprinting on this far left side, I was trying to see if I can get an easy kill right here. But it looks like he went into this doorway on the bottom floor. And he's not actually in a line of sight. So he's probably going to work his way up here and then work through the building or, or whatever there. We, I, I don't know what, what their game plan was. So that's sometimes what you got to do. I know that uh, several comments on videos like this are where people say, hey, well, I didn't realize like I need to slow down a little bit. You got to choose your gunfight a little bit wisely. I can see that this guy's in this building. I saw the footsteps um, as a, not footsteps, but I see their little legs. And I'm slowly closing the distance to work towards them because the UAV has gone and I want another UAV. My teammates are working on the big game bounty. So that'll give us a super UAV or an advanced UAV rather. So I come through here. I don't go around that left side. And then I peek through here and I'm kind of having an eye on that angle to see if anyone's there. And then I move to this cover right here and then I move closer. And this is my quick time. I got to go grab that UAV. I get a self revive. So in case I get down and then I'm like, oh shoot, there's three people here or two people. As this UAV passes, you can see three. There's going to be one right here gliding in or on the roof. There's two there. And then there's one on my level. Um, so these ones too could be floating in. And then this one over here is the, the one I, I actually have to get in a gunfight with that does likely have guns. 
So I check it. This guy landed in. I get a quick kill there. I come through. I got to reload really quick. I jump through. My teammate killed the other one. And then this guy, he must have had a terrible call out. Um, and the fact that I was walking while reloading, probably didn't get an audio cue. And then I just shoot this guy in the back. Pretty easy kill. And then now we know where the last two teams or the last two players are. We skip ahead a little bit. And you can see that this guy's right here. And what I'm doing is I'm pre-aiming this section. Because in case this guy tries to run away from my teammate, he's going to come directly up the stairs up here and directly into my crosshairs. So that's pretty much what I'm waiting for. And then this guy is landing in. So it should be a fairly easy kill. So there's that. The guy ends up going. And this is the problem when the, the, the lobby dies out before the zone. Um, you have to kind of do a little bit of hunt down players. So there's two on the roof here. I'm coming up. And I know that there's one on the far side over here, either gliding in or near that AC unit. And then this one should be gliding in or walking down here. Likely by the time I've climbed this ladder, they should have already landed. UAV is out of fuel. So I end up trying to get to this cover um, because you can see that this guy is right here. Uh, my teammates are fighting this guy probably somewhere right here um, on the other side of this or by the AC unit somewhere over there. And basically... I just push up, get to cover, and then beam the dude. He didn't have plates because he just came back. And that's pretty much a straightforward win. Appreciate the support. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.